We are live. Hello, welcome back, everybody. This is Gavin Kerr. I am here with another episode of Between the Notes with Hem Netchiot. Am I saying that correctly? Almost, almost. It's Ooh. Hem Netcher. You're the closest. You're the closest. Ah, pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I saw the, the the TJ is um is what I was really trying to focus on. So I'm glad that I at least got that part correctly. <laughs> One more time for me. What is it? Hem Netcher. Like a chest. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Not, not sure. All right. I dig that. How, what does that mean? So hem nature is ancient Middle Egyptian, and it basically tr literal translation means God's servant, um, which in our terminology would say a priest. And, yes. and basically the priests in the ancient Egypt, they were like the keepers of knowledge, the keepers, they were scribes. And so they was part of their job was to also um, to be able to to keep all of that knowledge. So that's part of why we named the band that to, so we can keep and share, you know, some of those ancient stories combined with our modern take on them, as it were. So, wow, getting getting deeper off the bat. I absolutely love that. That's actually so uh, I talk to a lot of people for the uh, the morning show that I do Java Delight. And I've sort of come to this conclusion that one of the purposes of being alive is to learn as much as possible and then pass it down mm -hmm. and just keep that going. So I do really love that. Uh, really quick, introduce yourselves and tell everybody what exactly you do in the band. Okay. Um, I'm Raven Rissi. Um, I am one of the main singers and creator of the project. Yeah, uh, I, I'm David. I play the synths and press the keys. But preferably <laughs> uh, do not do that, but still make the noise. Uh, we'll probably talk about more about that in a little bit. Yeah. And I'm Jesse Elliott. I'm a throat singer in the band. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, the first time, so... Brian, uh, the person, for who, those who don't know, who gets me uh, my, my guest, tried describing you and the band, you know, your band to me and trying to describe the, um, the genre. He's like, yeah, I can't really give them a genre. I can't really, you just got to listen to them, man. And I'm thinking to myself like, all right, what the hell is he talking about? There has to be a genre for them. There has to be something. And what, what I ended up finding in, uh, in some of your posts and your bios was, um, witch folk and, um, shamanic. Mm -hmm. If I'm saying that correctly, shamanic folk. What what is shamanic? Okay, so we're starting off the deep questions. Ooh, interesting. Mm -hmm. so, oh. First one, Pete. Ah. Yeah. So yeah. So we. Kinda, this is all very new to me. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's great. I love it. Um. Yeah. No. So basically, we kind of define ourselves as pagan industrial. Two big broad terms. Awesome. Uh, yes. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but shamanic is basically a. a it's a you know a, a word used to describe someone who does shamanic practices like a shaman for example um, that have many different cultures have them whether they're from ancient times to even our current modern day uh, you know a lot of the um, Aboriginal cultures still do this practice uh, here in North America as well as in um, Europe and Africa and all this sort of stuff as well as definitely in Latin America. So it's definitely yeah. used to describe somebody who is more in touch with what's going on around them, especially in like a nature, natural side of things and listening to what that part of the world and that part of how we connect has to say. Um, it's, yeah, it's a, a long, long study. <laughs> wow. I can, I can tell that a whole lot of thought went into this. Uh, the three of you, have all three of you been interested in this then and studied this like together? Is that how you met and decided that you wanted to carry on this like this sort of like lost piece of culture? Or how, how did the forming of the band and the topic of what it was going to be sort of become about? Well, it's interesting because I don't know if the topic is specific to any, any like culture even. Mm -hmm. I think it's more about... Um, bringing certain ideas to life and uh, I, w even though it's still kind of we're still new ish um it, it's interesting on how differently it resonates with different people uh i think yeah. we can give the background on how it all came together uh maybe you start and jesse has a good story and how he joined too so maybe mm -hmm. we'll, 
go into that a little bit. Sure. Yeah. So basically it kind of started when I was in about my third year of university a few years ago, um, studying and I was reading some part, one of my classes I took was reading ancient Egyptian literature and Mesopotamian literature. And, um, one piece of literature that I had to read was really describing the Egyptians were describing sounds and how we can't, we don't know what they sound like. We don't have music notation from them, but we have images, we have instruments, we have written text that they sound and music was really important to them. So this article was talking about describe using the way they've described word using descriptive words to describe sound to give it meaning. And I was like, that would be really cool to like do a band or something where you could like play these sounds and kind of bring this descriptive saying for this part of their mythology, you know, kind of bring it to life. And then, you know, university is super busy and I didn't have time to do anything. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> you know who does <laughs> and then, yeah. you know i graduated and the pandemic happened and i was like oh well now i have time to do you know <laughs> anything hmm. and everything yeah <laughs> everything, all at the same time um and so you know our ep was in various stages of noodling and different forms of the versions of the songs at that point and uh yeah and then via lovely facebook jesse came along and Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we both like we 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 all live in Vancouver, so we're very okay. local. And there was a um, a Facebook post, um, you know, looking for other artists. So me and Rissy got to talking, and they said that they could use a throat singer, and I'm like, okay. So um, yeah. Uh, did you know how to throat sing prior? Or did you have yes. to learn how to do so? Okay. Yes, I've I've re I recently learned about two years ago. I started. Wow. So, so after about a year of practicing, then I'm like, okay, I want to join a group or I want to get more involved with other people. You um, sound I've, amazing. You sound like you've been doing it for a very. The group in general sounds like it's been together for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You have a very very solid sound to you. Yeah. 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 When I, when I first met them, it was actually like last April. Yeah. That's when it started. And they already had five songs, like pretty much in the bag, ready to go almost built. And so I would just play their songs and kind of feel what comes out. And they're like, yeah. Oh, that's good. And we're, you know, put this in here and just mm, like hybrid these, these sounds that they yeah. started with. Um, all their cool synths and Rissy songwriting. And yeah, it's just been really, really cool to be a part Absolutely. of this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I got it. I can't imagine. I, I want to stick with you for a moment here, Jesse. Mm -hmm. um, how did you go about learning <clears throat> this <clears throat> very, very unique <clears throat> and from <throat> my understanding, difficult form yeah. of mm -hmm. singing? Like mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. made you want to get into it? And then how did mm -hmm. you pursue it? Well, I was, always looking for something, I think. So I think that is important, right? Like yeah, not knowing what it is that you want to do and always hungry for doing something. So I've had my entire life of that. And I have a background in trades. So I knew that I could do whatever I wanted, but I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And so a few years ago, my wife brought me into a little metaphysical store where they had sound healing with singing bowls. And I started getting into that. And I did, I found Matthew Cosell, a uh, cosmic throat singer who also lives here in Vancouver. And I'm like, that's it. <laughs> that's what I want to do. So I just YouTube learn. Um, so yes, it's hard, but anybody yeah. can do it. You have to have the will. You have to practice. You have to want to do it. You just, just keep going. Just push yourself, practice all the Anybody? time. Anybody? Anybody. <laughs> like they have they have kids that can do this in Tuva. And, and you know, it doesn't matter what gender or your body shape or whatever or anything like that. Because Do you think you can um, attempt to give me a very quick lesson okay. in the beginning? Okay, if you want. The... See if I can produce a sound. Okay, so <laughs> here's your Adam's, your Adam's apple. Right. And then go above it above your Adam's apple, like right in here. Okay. And push yeah. in and just, just make a sound. 
Uh, you said above my Adam's apple? Yeah. Uh, okay, so... You... Uh, hmm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of chest. It's a lot of um, and, and constriction chest, in your okay. throat. Yeah, you got to push the air out and you have to like, like really clamp in. The... Like that? It, it's a little rough. <laughs> Yeah, no, like, like, I'd imagine it should, it should so. sound like this. <laughs> so it's a little growly. Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 very interesting. It's not low though. It's not low. No, you don't have to go down here. I can do that, but you don't have to. <laughs> it's your normal pitch. So. <laughs> It's interesting. That's it yeah. Just happens, right? It's like, hey. Yeah, yeah, he's got it. I've been bugging him. So, so I think like yeah, it's a lot of growling at the beginning, yeah. but eventually you just hit the right note that works yeah. for you. Like, oh, this is it. Okay. There's I know because when I do like any kind of distorted vocal, mm -hmm. I do it from a vocal fry. So that's what mm -hmm. I keep naturally trying to transition into. But I know that's mm -hmm. not what it is. Mm -hmm. Well. The, <laughs> Your vocal cords are to the left and the right, and they flap. But then there's two more, and they're up a little higher that we never okay. use. So they're like virgin. They're baby. They don't do anything. But when you activate them, then they start vibrating, and they cut the sound in half. <laughs> so that's why it go, sounds lower. Yeah. So... <laughs> It's science, I love that. I'm, I'm definitely going to be. I'm going to drive my fiance mm -hmm. up the wall, just walking <laughs> around tomorrow. What can I get for you? She's like, "What are you doing?" Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> All my friends like hated breakfast? me. <laughs> yeah. All my friends hate. Everybody's like, "Oh my god, here comes Jesse Throat singing again." Oh my god, I just don't <laughs> get it. I don't get it. But then when I got a record, then they were like, "Oh." Yeah, well, it's one of those things that it's one of those things too that like if you hear somebody talking about it, you're, you don't think much about it. But then once you hear somebody do it, you're like, "What was that?" Yeah. So it's one of those strange skills. So one of the things that I first noticed, um, obviously, was Jesse your throat singing. But then, Raven, you have this amazing, almost operatic voice to you. Thank where you. does that where do you where does your tone come from oh um so i guess background um so basically i started out with classical piano when i was six to about 16. did that whole thing for quite a while um and in between that i also did a lot of choral singing um did some like for quite a while actually when i was like a young teenager like 12 14 15 that type of a thing um and uh yeah i've always like music has always been you know such a major major influence on me like one of my i'm one of my i call it my my cheesy cheesy goth raven rissy moments is like you know when i first saw, <laughs> when I first saw evanescence live i was like she can play piano and sing and be in a rock band i need to do this <laughs> <laughs> You know, and so I, I, I really, I really started like listening, you know, just on my own when you're like 17 and grumpy and just really yeah. listening to like, how does she sing like that? You know, what is she doing and that type of a stuff? And how does she play and sing at the same time? Because that's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and yeah, and so a lot of it has just been, you know, over the years, just really, you know, really, really working with what, what, where is my range? You know, like I'm not, I'm not an alto. I can go a little bit lower, you know, but I'm, I'm really like a, a mezzo, you know, mezzo soprano. That's really where, you know, yeah. I shine. And, you know, especially listening to a lot, like I listen to a lot of uh, a metal and that type of stuff, you know, so I'm not an opera singer, but I enjoy the, the, the fullness that you get from having, you know, that style of. Absolutely. Vocal. Um, You know, and I actually have, um, I work in a music store, so I'm also currently taking vocal. I've been taking vocal lessons for the past like five or so months just because we've been, you know, stuck at home, can't do anything, you know, just to get all of that 
warmed up again. How does that work? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I need to get back into that. I um yeah. I took choir all throughout high school. I, I was in symphonic and show choir. And then when I got out of it, I actually ended up paying for a really nice vocal app that yeah, I used yeah. for probably like five months yeah. and then just slowly stopped using. Yeah, and I've now tried, especially with quarantine. Yeah, yeah, I've tried those apps. You know, there are some good warm ups on YouTube, but I find that like, I don't know, it's hard to do those like on a daily basis, you know, or to stay rigid with them. Like you lose it after a while. And so when I started, you know, working in my current job, I was like, oh, they do lessons. Well, now I think I shall be doing some of these. And it's, <laughs> it's been, to be honest, it's actually been really helpful because, um, you know, we work a lot on like technique and developing between your chest and your head voice. And, you know, my head yeah. voice is strong, but, you know, as most women, our chest voice are not always as strong as men are. So I have been really working on developing that better because that gives you, you know, more um especially some of our newer songs are a bit lower than i normally would sing which is fine but uh it's been really good to develop to redevelop some of that and especially to you know work on re remembering my diaphragm how to do things because we haven't been able to do anything for quite a while <laughs> so if you really want to try something interesting that will help develop your chest voice a lot um i would recommend musicals that's something that that's something that I use a whole lot for yeah. practicing uh, my head voice and my chest voice, and those weird little transitions yeah, totally. is uh, is doing different musicals. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we actually, work on a lot of like musicals and Broadway stuff in my yeah. just to, because they switch so quickly, and I'm like, ah, okay, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's it's a uh, jungle gym to say the least. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, and David, I have not forgotten about you. So you are, now correct me if I'm wrong, but you are the mastermind behind the instrumentals, correct? Uh, so uh, I, that is correct, mostly. Uh, credit where credit is due. Um, yeah. We have some, a good a friend of ours who has been doing production. Um, so he's been adding things where we've been looking at, oh, this could use some of your magic. So, um, so of course, every band has like a um, a producer who helps can, like mix things and adds little things. I can only recommend that enough to everybody. Like yeah. when you have, yeah, I think you know any any project has like the things where you look at it and you're like, oh, we could do better. Um, yeah. is there somebody that that we can get help with? So yeah. um, yes, that's always appreciated. But yeah, a, a lot of the instrumentation and how it usually works is me um, just like noodling around on my sins. <laughs> uh, and then um i have this like 20 second piece where i'm like this sounds really good and then it sits there and a lot of the songs that's where they came from they sat there for uh like a year or two yep. if it makes you feel better everybody does better. that like yeah but yeah. um then eventually it's like let's see well, what are we gonna like i think this sounds good what are you gonna do with this and then she goes in there and just copies like the whole thing and it's like now we have a song and <laughs> <laughs> um, one of our new songs it was paste it was paste really paste really cool. um, yeah. one of our new songs i had like a one minute snippet uh that i sent because she was away and i was like hey check this out and then the next day she came back and she's like yeah i have the whole song lyrics and everything <laughs> it's a beautiful song we're, we're really excited about yeah. uh, getting that out too but just on how all of that comes together uh, was it was always really fun, and then even with um, uh, Jesse coming in, um, I don't know if you mentioned that yet, but uh, when so we did a lot of the stuff online because you know um, mm -hmm. can't really do anything, mm -hmm. um, and we did re we did book the recording for the album in in June, and the day before the recording we met Jesse. It's like, hey Jesse, nice to actually meet you in person. Um, now let's record an album. Yeah, uh, th that's how it kind of worked, and and seeing on how all of that comes together, and everybody brings their best, like little, uh, not big or small piece to the project, and makes it like something better than it could have been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like in in its like individual parts is really amazing. I think that's that's the best part about like making music. It's seeing it all come together yeah. and seeing the mm -hmm. end result, and be yeah. like. This is how I pictured it in my head, but actually seeing it and everybody who has been putting the work yeah. in, the same with the videography who's done amazing mm -hmm. work the whole time. Mm -hmm. like, yes, you do have some awesome videos. And the thing I like 
the one thing that I noticed about the videos is I could tell that you put a lot of thought into them because in my mind, listening to the song, it felt like like I was imagining what was happening in the video and then actually watching it. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. it, everything. Yes, your music just feels like just epicness in the woods and has this sort of like this mysterious layer over it. And that that's what like a lot of your videos are is being just just there and just really feeling it i love it thank you thank you mm -hmm. um, yeah do you uh do you shoot your videos yourselves or do you get like a videographer to come in and yeah. shoot it and edit yeah. it for you yeah so we definitely don't shoot it ourselves i do not have the talent to shoot film in that way we it's difficult <laughs> it is it is um so we have another good friend of ours uh here who's also in vancouver his name is joey chaos and uh, yeah, he has a project too <laughs> called Joey Joe Chaos and the Ghosts. Yeah, exactly. And he's uh, <laughs> that's what he does for a living. He does film, and um, we hire him to do all of our video uh, shooting as well as the editing. You know, he's made our lyric videos, um, the other world music mm -hmm. video. Uh, we have a new lyric video being released on the 10th, and we're shooting another music video at the end of May um mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. super excited nice and, yeah and between like you know myself and like dave and jesse we all kind of figure out a rough storyline or storyboarding roughly and then we go okay this is our plan is this doable how do we make this work that's not like a crazy budget because we don't have a crazy budget and he goes yeah this is how i would do this and you know so it's kind of a combination of his technical how do we actually do this properly and like effectively and you know cost efficient as well mm -hmm. as yeah. but making it still get the end result that you know we're all hoping for so yeah he he definitely is our is our awesome video guy he does yeah i would say that he really killed it on that video he was lying on the ground rolling around yeah. um <laughs> breaking a sweat yeah. hurting his arm because he had to carry the the camera so he really went to bat for us yeah, no, Joey's great. He does very good work, so we're really happy. To I mean, that's – I'm sorry to hear that that he hurt his arm, but that's great that you were able to find somebody who, one, you get along with. Um, it's it's one thing to find somebody who's good at their work. It's another thing to find somebody who's good at their work that you like. Mm. Um, but then also <laughs> yep. uh, somebody who is – actually really dedicated and cares about their craft and the uh the quality of the product that they're making that that's very very important so one thing that i noticed about uh listening through all your music is the 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 lyrics or even lack thereof a lot of the time mm -hmm. how do you go about writing I, i've noticed that um a lot of the words are not english and a lot of the times they're just not words at all. Uh, uh, so elaborate a bit on me on how you choose what uh, what to say, whether it's uh, English or not. And then if you're not saying any anything at all, how do you go about choosing the sounds and the melodies? Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, like initially, um, so for example, like with the Anubis song, which you're right, is not in English. It's an ancient Middle Egyptian. Um, okay. I thought it would be, I took a class on how to read and write hieroglyphs and I'm like, this would be so cool if I could do a thing. So I did a thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's yeah. Joey hated it. He was like, Oh my God, I'm never making a lyric video with hieroglyphs again. <laughs> but no. Um, but, uh, yeah. So it, I find for me, me when initially kind of setting up you know some of dave's noodlings uh i kind of like i like that you guys call them noodlings is it really <laughs> <laughs> no i i find i tend to the music i that i when i listen to other bands that catches my ear i find there's always some sort of a, a whether it's a vocals or a synth line or a guitar line or something that cat like it's leading the song, you know, or maybe it's like, like if it's electronic, it's like a big, like, you know, arpeggiated drum beat or something. It leads the song and you, you kind of catch on to that. And so yeah. I find with my, with our stuff, I, 
go, okay, well, what is the main thing that's driving the song? Is it lyrics? Is it the bass line with Jesse's throat singing? Is it a melody that Dave's created on the synth? You know, and I kind of go, okay, well, yeah. that's, you know, the, um, the melody, then that's what's driving it. So like, like, um, I guess in other world, for example, that really, uh, most of the instrumental stuff was there before the lyrics. Um, and yeah, the bass line is the driving part in that song, you know? And so because that's the driving part and because the nature of that song is meant to be very ethereal and very, you know, otherworldly, the lyrics and, yeah. the, and the, the spacing of the lyrics, you know, it's not meant to be the main thing you hear, you know, like the main driving force that you're supposed to latch on to. Um, it's just meant to complement what's going on. You know, like one of our, our new songs that hopefully will be out maybe this year or next year, uh, it's called Void. And that one, I barely sing at all on it. You know, it's really more instrumental. It's a, a void. Yeah, <laughs> it's really instrumental. And, you know, yeah. with Jesse's throat singing, you know, strategically placed to enhance what's going on. Um, I kind of describe it as like Victorian England meets Lovecraft. So, you know, happy, fun <laughs> stuff. Um, <laughs> but, no, you know, that's, but that's like, wonderful. so it kind of, it kind of depends on the song. Like, again, but then again, in like another new song, hopefully the single would be out maybe the end of this year for Celtic Cry. That one is very, the, the lyrics are very, um, there's a lot of lyrics in it. And that's yeah. especially for a particular reason, because that's those in that song, the lyrics and the melody of what, is being sung is really what's driving that song because those lyrics are so vital to the story that's being created. So, yeah, I think it, it, it does really depend on what is the story that that song is trying to tell and then do the vocals, how are they complementing what's happening or are they leading? And so, well, Jesse, you had like some input on that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you do yours though. Mm -hmm. Like it's almost kind of, well, you can probably explain it better than me. <laughs> Yeah, well, I noticed most of the songs have a lot of um, verses and choruses that uh, Rissy writes and a lot of stories. Um, a lot of the themes, too, if you want to touch on the themes, like pagan themes, mm -hmm. the EP Kemet is a lot about the ancient Egyptians or the that sort of stuff. Um, but the new one that we're working on more has different aspects now coming out, like the elements and you know fire and these kind of things and um <clears throat> so with the throat singing for me it's more of an expression so i just love to express myself uh combining the throat singing skills like techniques with just making up stuff so i don't have hardly there's no lyrics but they're words that i just make up so yeah. i don't know if it's you know, ancestral coming out, or if it's just sort of a freedom to say and whatever and not be judged in a sense too. Yeah. Because if you have a political message or if you have a belief, okay, save the trees, then somebody's going to look down on you and go, oh, you're a tree hugger or, or something like this. Um, yeah. They'll also, find something to be mad about. There's all, it's always somebody. <laughs> But at the same time, though, whoever hears it, if it doesn't actually have a language, then they can interpret it however they want. So whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever that means to you, whatever, like whatever I express, if that's something for you that means something, then that's how you interpret it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love I find, that. Yeah, I find some of Jesse's throat singing, too, can be, uh, depending on the song, is very rhythmic oriented to match. Mm -hmm to try and match what's happening in the bass lines to give it, you know, because uh, it, it's very, you know, electronic, dancey, in your face mm -hmm. type stuff as well, that having that oomph, extra oomph in that bass line, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think the, the way he does his throat singing, you know, that's what really captivated me when he sent me some stuff. I was like, oh, we can put this with the thing. And now it's mm -hmm. going to be even more epic. Oh. It's almost like a, it's almost like an <laughs> instrument. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's almost like an instrument. Yeah. Yeah, with a, and yeah. and all of the different dynamics and overtones and things that you can do in this area is just really crazy you know like yeah. all the different effects 
Absolutely. That's something that I really noticed. And I actually believe that that is, um, that follows into what I think that your group's strongest suit is, is that you're, you use your voices as instruments. And not only that, but the biggest thing is that you can just tell, like even now just talking to you, um, just backs it up even more. But when I was first listening to your music, I thought to myself, there is absolutely no ego in any of these parts. Mm-hmm. There, there, no. Mm-hmm. I can tell that nobody is fighting to be in the spotlight. No, nobody is mm-hmm. fighting for more time or anything like that. It is so balanced. You and you know exactly when to pull away, when to step aside, so another instrument can shine. You know mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. you need to sing more, or when you need to match with the bass rather than do your own thing. It just has such a genuine feel to it it truly is beautiful i really think that if you continue to stick with that Mm -hmm. you will definitely succeed for that that makes me beg the question there's no way is this your first project no this isn't my first project (laughs) okay Um, (laughs) i I just want to say thank you very much for that compliment because that um from issues with previous projects that has been an issue and so that one of my personal goals was to be like no, we're not going to do this weird ego tripping craziness because that doesn't yeah. work for anybody and it just wrecks everything in the long run. So I really appreciate you saying that because yeah, it it's definitely been a goal. I think of my own personal goal as a musician to be yeah. able to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Check serve that the song, too, you know, which is not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, this isn't my first project. Um, uh, David and I, we, along with a, and a, a good friend of ours, and I guess our old bandmate back in Calgary, Alberta, uh, we had an electronic industrial band for mm, seven, five, six years or so. Um, and we had, you know, a couple, like an EP and an album and a few singles and things like that. I think it's still around. Um, yeah. It was called Technotron. And uh, that was kind of my first official I'm in a band officially, you know, yeah. Thing. Yeah. And, yeah. And we, you know, we played, uh, you know, we played a bunch of shows like at Terminus Festival, which is a big electronic industrial festival that happens at Dickens pub normally every year in Calgary. In Calgary. Hopefully when this all happens, it'll happen again. Cause it's amazing. Um, you know, and, uh, yeah, we were in that for quite a while. And then when we moved to Vancouver, so I, so I could go back to university. We, uh, I was part of um, a world fusion shamanic folk rock band. That's how we described ourselves um, at the time. Um, there was it's about, fabulous. Yeah, there was about seven or so of us, and I was the main female singer, along with another male singer and uh, a, like oh guitars, drums, bazooki, cello, violin. Like there was like it was a big ensemble type thing, and. Um, yeah, so I was part of that for about four or five years, and unfortunately, that didn't work out via the pandemic. But say la vie, it is what it is. But yeah. Uh, yeah, and so definitely, you know, like we played shows at like we headlined like Diversity Festival up on Texada Island, which is a smaller island here in BC. Um, you know, we played the rickshaw in Vancouver, places like that, which was really cool. Um, so yeah, definitely, you know. But this has kind of been a for myself, it's been a finally being able to be like, yeah, I have time and energy to do the thing I've wanted to do for a while. So here we are. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. To see Most stuff late. Together. Yeah. Yeah. And you haven't gotten to play any shows yet together, have you? No. It's I just do. really bizarre. I literally have yeah. daydreams and dreams of playing <laughs> shows live right now with this project. We were talking about the other day oh. and you said... I think I'm gonna cry. I think, when we I, do might, yeah. I think I might cry on stage because I'm actually playing this band live finally. After oh, this. there's gonna be a lot of tears when people oh. start playing shows. Yeah. I can already tell. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you think about it so much because I'm curious. What is? Um, and I'll, each of you can answer this individually because I'm sure you have different uh, sorts of visions and varieties of it. What is your ideal for how you're going to be doing shows, which is three of you up there? What are you going to be doing to make sure that people are engaged, they're paying attention? Yes, you have an amazing sound, but when you go to see somebody perform, you go to see a performance. 
So what about your show is going to draw the crowd to the stage instead of just listening throughout the venue? Yeah. Jesse, what do you think? Well, I think we have something going for us. We're, we're unique in a sense. Yeah. So absolutely. There's a lot of sounds that we have that are, you know, you know, yeah. The sound speak for itself. The music speaks for yeah. itself, I would say. Um, so I think for us it would be, you know, we got to be present. You know, we're going to have to yeah. be up there and we, we, we've got to practice. We got to get our parts right. We got to, you know, just uh, perform and feel the energy and just just give everything that we got. You know, I mean, I, uh, I've i never been in a band. Um, I've, you know, noodled around like David does with electronic music over the years but um nothing really uh, but i was in 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 high school musicals so i used to be a performer an actor this kind of stuff so i i think nice. that you know it's just what we all love to do it's, it's um, in yeah. there we're, we're mm-hmm. pushing mm-hmm. it out of them give it like yeah, it's yeah. be like oh yeah i'm back it's great <laughs> yeah. it's a drug it yeah yeah, I think we're all addicted to that. We're all excited about it. Um, and I think that that's sort of funny because for us, this all coming together has been really amazing, um, but we're in the lockdown or we're in yeah. restrictions or whatever. So it's like th- those those really tough things have to break through. So, you know, yeah. we're not giving up. We're, we, you know, we always continue to make more music. Well, what are we going to do? Well, we'll just, let's just do another album. We can't play yeah. it, the first one yet but we're gonna make another one yeah. keep making so, music keep making yeah. videos you know like whenever they send me something and that's how it works they'll send me a piece and i'll be like yes <laughs> and i'll play i'll play it for three days and i'll be like hey, damn here i'm coming in <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i think we all just love what we do so we're just gonna try and give everybody what we feel and put it out there good it's mm-hmm. uh, awesome yeah, where, where, where I was coming from is I always had, um, we have good friends here in Vancouver that, uh, you know, we go camping and tell stories around a fire and sing songs and stuff. And that feeling of, and even when I was growing up, uh, I'm from, from Germany and <laughs> I grew up on a, on a goat farm. So uh, <laughs> now I'm, and I'm Vancouver in Canada, but um you know even there um did that that feeling of making music together around the fire is something that a i think we all have in us and we all need but also something that i think is part of a live show as well so um like because i'm doing the electronic cards to me it's important how to um present them because ultimately you're just pushing buttons right Mm. but the way on how you push buttons is important and i've been really thinking a lot about how does this work on a performance aspect. Um, And I'm a big fan of uh, alternative, like input, MIDI inputs, so to speak. So instead of just having your keys, you have like different instruments. So I I should have brought, maybe I'll grab the instruments later, but. um, Yeah, uh, you're more than welcome to. uh, It's it's just a, yeah, I'm gonna (laughs) gonna talk. Um, bring, bring her the, face the, went, oh all right uh now the the yeah the weird instrument show and tell is always fun um but uh one of the ones that i have is a digital input where you um it's actually a typing instrument where you do a single finger type that it's a strap around your fingers that uh, allows you to play keys but it makes for a totally different way to perform the music when as opposed to sitting in front or standing in front of a keyboard yeah th- this is um, this is kind of kind of how I, how it looks, right? And you just like, um, oh, you just like s- strap it on, and then um, every time you move your fingers, it actually hits a key. And if you, it has a mouse what? mode too, so you can actually modulate uh, the sounds as well. So I still think um, that you're like a reason- Jedi. <laughs> yeah, so so this is part of my my part of what I want to be a part of the performance is that um, it it doesn't look like a sh- like perf- like it's still the things are being actually played, but not just guy in front of computer pressing a button or in front of yeah, key, 
but actually making it a part of a performance like you would around the fire playing a guitar singing playing the drums all of those things yeah. because i think we have the technology now to do that and making the technology more invisible but still a part of the performance so absolutely it becomes more of a dance at that point yeah. yeah yeah and and i think that's what our bodies have been made for right like a mm. lot of yeah. like, like music like ancient music has been all about rhythm and um using your whole body to actually like perform to celebrate it you dance together you sing together and and i think that's something um that i want to be part of that performance and hopefully it comes across the right way there's some technical hurdles that like i'm a programmer by day so uh some yeah. of the things i started figuring out but um there's little technical difficulties like delay is a real problem like yeah. <laughs> yes you probably yeah. know right if you like press it yes and it doesn't happen especially right if now. you're doing wireless things yeah no yeah. delay is definitely an issue so, um, or batteries dying or something else yeah. you know bluetooth yeah. is your enemy yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. dave is the technomancer of the group <laughs> yeah so, so uh, to wrap that up this is where i'm coming from for for the performance aspect from that i want the i don't want to hide the electronic part because I've seen a couple of bands that play more folky music that always have electronic music. Every band has electronic, like a backing track in some way. Don't hide it. Just, you know, yeah. bring those old sounds into the future and say, yeah, it's there. But then also don't just hide behind your computer yeah. and, and press yeah. it. Down. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. Yeah. That's Let's badass. It works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like that a lot. I, I'm just imagining you and like your your cloak or whatever your um your outfit happens to be for that show and then you just have on those webbings and you're just going like this right and just making this amazing music and then you bring your hands together and the beat drops boom yep. <laughs> yep. exactly yep. so the trick is <laughs> the, the trick is going to make sure sorry the trick is going to make sure uh, making sure that it um that it looks real right that it's not just yeah. somebody performing a dance that it yeah. is part of the performance, but that's what I'm aiming for with the, the couple of the projects I've been working on, making sure that exactly what you're saying looks real. It's not just, it, it's actually happening. It's not just something that yeah. you study to make the movements. It really is you making the music because mm -hmm. making the music as a, like with your body as a human, I think always gives a different a texture. Like, I don't know if you've talked about this yet, mm -hmm. adding our own, recorded instruments to it mm, over yeah. like mm -hmm. a digital rhythm or a recording made a huge difference. Just even just an egg shaker, yeah. just go to the studio, record an egg shaker. All of a sudden your music becomes like a whole different, like gets yeah. like a different a whole, layer. Where yeah. like, oh, where was mm -hmm. that? It was just an yeah. egg shaker, but yay. Now the song is even more epic than it was five minutes ago. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, that's yeah. something I really miss about um, music that was recorded in like the, uh, the, the, the eighties and the nineties and like the, the late seventies, they put a lot of weird sounds and so many different instruments into their music. I, I feel like um, a lot of mm. modern music is missing that layering and those inconsistencies and like those little, that like the salt and the pepper, of the music has kind of been mm -hmm. washed out over the years. So I think that was the reason why it was so refreshing to hear the balance and the different sounds from you guys doing that. And then what you were saying as far as um making it seem believable rather than just someone doing a dance, I definitely think that it is absolutely possible to do it. And a great example would be um I've seen videos, I don't know if any of you have, but I've seen videos of like uh there's one of this kid at a talent show playing an invisible drum kit while the person, I don't know if the person was backstage or if it was recording or what, but there was another drum kit actually being played. And the person on the invisible kit was so on beat and so like fluent with everything and sharp with his hits. It looks like he was actually playing the drums. It was mind blowing. <laughs> like it was really it was really strange to see it was quite an illusion so i i think as long as you were to practice it and really get it down to like to a t that you would be able to make it look extremely extremely impressive and magical totally. 
so that's uh, fine. I know you have lots of thoughts too. Oh, you're, you're, you're dying. You're yes. Dying. <laughs> I always have so many thoughts when it comes to playing live with this project. No. Yes. Um, what What do you got? Oh man. So yeah. No. I think for my part in it, like Jesse said, it really comes down to you know as the singers, um, in you know everybody initially always looks at you because you're the you yeah know, you're that that front face and so you know, whether you want it to be or not, you know, that that's part of it. And I feel that you do, you know, like I, as much as I'm dying to play a show, I don't, I feel I don't want to play a show until I know that, you know, I know this stuff inside and out, it's muscle memory, you know, because then you can really focus yeah. on actually delivering, mm, you know, the energy yes. and that into that mm -hmm. space and not just worrying about, oh, okay, I come in now. Okay, now I come in, you know, because that, I mean, yeah. you're always going to have those little moments, but, you know, it's right now be just with everything that's been happening, you know, it's quite a, you know, unfortunate, fortunately, unfortunately, first impressions make a, you know, make a, make mm -hmm. or break it. And so to speak right now. So I think yeah. for me, it, it's, yeah, I think, you know, whenever we eventually hopefully will play a show that really, you know, being able to, to give, you know, like you, you, you watch, like I always say, like you watch the, you know, the music video or you listen to the music and, you know, I go, the, that's, I love it when people are like, oh, I, I love this part. And it totally reminded me of this, you know, and it's like, and it's great. And I'm just like, if I could just sing it for you live, there's so much more in it that like, you can't get from a recording, you know, like in, like for the, the, the other world music video, you know, we, we really debated about like, do we make, you know, a video for that song right away? Do we do, you know, you drop like with a major like the major boom right away or do you kind of build up to it mm -hmm. and you know we decided you know what let's like release and do it like if we're gonna do it do the big release and so mm -hmm. you know yeah. we, that song for me is kind of um so far you know one of the songs that represents the aspects of what the band really is about and so i was so pleased when we were able to actually how that video turned out because you know the imagery or the you know, the way like, you know, us as performers look in it and how we're performing the songs, you know, that really is part of, you know, for my part, what you're, I'm hoping that you will see when we play live, you know, it's, it's really about for myself, you know, getting into that, a different headspace and, you know, almost, I don't want to say becoming a character, but it is part of that. Like you kind of become another, yeah. another character that, you know, in that moment, all you're doing is doing this aspect of yourself it's like now i'm on stage doing these songs doing this that's what i'm doing nothing else matters you know and being mm -hmm. able to a know your parts well enough and you know have and to be to be able to to listen to like listen to yourself and to be able to really be present in that moment because i think if you can be present in that moment you will give that to the crowd and you know, hopefully if I get one person that goes, oh my God, that, that, that blah, like that, that's great. You know, um, but for, for me, it really, it really is being able to just almost just let go of all of the, you know, the work stuff, the home stuff, the weird pandemic stuff, the what, you know, whatever is going on just to be able like, no, we're doing, this is the thing we're doing right now and putting all of the, you know, all of your energy and all of your, you know, emotion into what you're doing. That's, that's kind of my, my goal. You know, so I'm like, oh, you guys just wait. You ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many L literally days. have it, not live anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, so one of the big things that does come with a live show that I want to touch on, because I did check it out, is merchandise. Mm -hmm. You guys have some crazy merchandise. I got to know. Where we, oh I love it it's so cool it's very unique I gotta know though where do these bones come from? So last summer we have some friends who have a, like an Airbnb tiny home up on Denman Island which is uh, a smaller island just off of um, uh, Vancouver Island and yeah. uh, we went up there when everything was slow and quiet and just to get away from the apartment for two weeks because wow <laughs> it was crazy <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> um and yeah and so that but that um island itself it has tons and tons of deer 
And because yeah. of the where the island's situated, there's not a lot of predators that you know to that will kill the deer. So there's uh, a lot of deer. Um, and yes. so in the springtime, and I guess like yeah, it was June, so it was like the spring, early summer. Um, you know whether they die of natural causes or they're old or or you know I mean there are some like birds and you know some minor things that will you know eat the deer up there and stuff like that but those all of those bones you say birds yes will eat the deer well they they well they like eat the, <laughs> they eat the dead deer they yes. eat the dead deer come on oh <laughs> okay I don't hey, I, I, up there that are they they like deer <laughs> well I thought maybe like a swarm like Resident Evil style <laughs> comes <laughs> no, in and just no. <laughs> predator that'd be predator gnarly birds. that would be a crazy music video that you yeah, could right? do where, where you're singing and there's just this swarm of resident evil birds just taking right? deer out left and right <laughs> i saw this movie it didn't end well <laughs> yeah that'd be gnarly you have, you have like them coming from the sky and then the rats coming from the ground and like just exactly. just no, yeah no. Uh, yeah but yeah here come the locusts you know? yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah no so basically um so dave and i were up there and we went and you know did a bunch of bushwhacking for probably over 10 hours and gathered all of those bones ourselves so they're all like ethically sourced because they were dead for a few years <laughs> um you know they were all dried out by the sun they i sat there yeah. for hours and scrubbed them all with good soap and water and then let them whiten nice. in the sun and all this sort of stuff so they're all clean and sanitized and all that sort of stuff but yeah they're all you know ethically sourced found bone you know nothing was killed purposely or anything of that nature yeah. so they're yeah they we gathered them by hand for hours and of hours of literally <laughs> whacking through bushes up to like my chest it was a lot <laughs> yeah, it was fun it really was fun but yeah it was a lot of uh yeah i literally have a i mean that sounds day. like fun but in my mind it's it's also very barbaric you like both have machetes and just a sack on your back full of deer bones <laughs> yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's <laughs> essentially it yeah pretty much we had our that's snacks. awesome that was, that yeah. Was, uh, but yeah, no, and then we literally have a massive bag full of clean bones literally on the floor beside me of eventually maybe i might make into merch one day or do something with i don't know yet but yeah i dig it i dig it a lot and then do you have um is it painted on there or do you have it carved in there you have um, the name on there correct oh so i painted it on there um i tried this is not okay. carving Bone oh is very you good. know what i can actually solo you out really quick Ooh, so we can yes, see that yeah. Yay. That's, that's the awesome. hemnetcher logo that she yeah. painted on there but yeah so i, I love painted, that yeah i painted it on there on all the different uh pieces of merch i did try mm -hmm. i have a dremel tool and i did actually try carving it but bone is really really hard and yes some of those tools like i just don't have the arm and wrist strength to actually press into that it's just not no nah, not i completely good. understand it's also it's hard to breathe it is, like yeah, it, it's not, very heavy on your lungs yeah, yeah I, I had know. um I have a buddy, and when we were in uh, high school, we used to make pipes out of uh, deer antlers. Mm -hmm. His his father just had like a whole bunch from his grandfather and all that stuff, so, like, and we make little little pipes out of them. Yeah. And we would have to wear like a mask or something because it was just so heavy on your lungs carving yeah. them. Yeah. Did, did you did you actually get them tuned the right ways you wanted to as well? Yeah, yeah, no, we got them pretty good. I actually, um, in, in my kitchen, I still have the first one that I ever made. I, I took the uh, the leg of a um of just like an old stool, and I and on the um the part of the like I had like a little nub of a deer antler that I used to make the bowl, and then I used uh, I just like glued them together after I fit the pieces. So yeah, that's basically. Ooh, let me. There you go. See if I can back it up so it's not so blurry. Yeah. So I love that. That's a lovely That's so unique. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So Yeah. I'm not sure where you put it. You just it's like a knickknack, you know, you just hang it uh, on like your door or something like that. <laughs> I, I I can imagine like some and like an angsty teenager just has it there. The mother's like, what does that mean? It means stay out. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna touch it. <laughs> Excellent. It means no girls allowed, mom. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I approve. I approve. <laughs> Please do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I want to get to know the three of you a little bit more. And I'm going to start with David, just because you did start to talk about your childhood a bit. You were originally from Germany. You said you grew up on a goat farm. Tell me a bit more about you and your uh, your beginnings. Uh, yeah, totally. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, where to start? Where you already started, right? <laughs> um, so so I, I did um, uh, grow up a little, I guess, more alternative in that way. Um, it was the first organic goat farm in 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 southern Germany, which was um, interesting uh, because now it's a it's a big thing. Now a lot of like food that you can get in Germany is like organic officially. So yeah, it's an interesting journey from oh those weirdos to this is how we probably ah. grow our food. Uh, and, and, and you know, I'd you're just ahead of your time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and at least think about where it comes from. Um, but uh, some of the things that stuck with me was, um, like I said, the just sitting around the fire. Um, I I was probably for some reason I ended up picking up piano, uh, even though my mm -hmm. family wasn't super musical. But every mm -hmm. everybody of my other three siblings and me picked up an instrument at one point. Um, which I'm very grateful for now to at least have like some of that background still. So I yeah. played piano for six years. Um, and <laughs> then, <laughs> then I guess moved away. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, the reason why I ended up in, in, in Canada is there's the, well, I always say that, yeah, there's two reasons to <laughs> move across the world is either for work or for, uh, for love. But um, we met at like, an off night in, in Calgary where it was doing a student ex exchange and, like 13 years ago uh and um yeah that's that's how it all ended up that way but um i like how like being exposed to like you know i was at a lot of the the goth festivals in, in germany which are massive like yeah. you know um every i know everybody in north america is like yes i really want to go there and everybody should but yeah. what i really appreciate about coming here is how committed people are to alternative music and making it happen yeah. in the quality, um, especially in like smaller areas, like, like, you know, Canada is super packed and Alberta is not like a hub for any kind of like alternative music, but uh, it managed to have one of the best festivals I've run for, like I've been to ever really. Yeah. And um, I really hope it keeps going because it's been such a great experience to see bands that I've seen at the festivals in Germany with like 40,000 people with like 400 other people and just hang out. You can chat with them later at dinner. They stay the whole weekend yeah, and just so chill and be people. And it's, um, it's wonderful. So, yeah. so I really appreciate seeing like both of those sides and getting all those influences. It was really cool. So yeah, that, that's where I'm coming from. Um, and um, yeah, we've been on a really interesting journey, and now we're on on the west coast, which is also quite different than you know the prairies. Um, so again, new and different influences, of all those things. Uh, it's really interesting on what those being exposed to all of that stuff it does to you like over you over your, your lifetime. Hmm? You and your yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I love that absolutely. I'm actually gonna go suggesting this because because I know Raven is gonna run with this question for a while. <laughs> no, why don't we talk about that? <laughs> so yeah, suggesting. So well, don't fall into my trap from, because I'll talk forever too. So, oh geez, <laughs> I'm at a crossroads <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, actually, I was. I don't really have much of a musical background. I think I've always wanted to. I wanted to sing, but at, when I was younger, I didn't think I had talent. You know, I'd play around and it didn't sound good yeah. or, you know, oh, I guess I can't do it. I just didn't understand, you know, that you have to, you know, believe you can and practice and all that kind of stuff for it to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, oh, you know, you can't carry a tune or whatever. Just sort of like, you know, and life happens and. I just kind of didn't really follow my dreams after high school. Like I was into acting and performing, dancing even a little bit, but I didn't, I just ended up getting a job and I got into trades. I got into roofing 
So I have like many years of hard labor and learning a trade, but it turns yeah. out that that really was my education about a lot of things. So it taught me strength, you know, how to use my hands, my eyes, how to see things on a level, just, just to master myself in that sort of sense. Um, and then, you know, seeking wisdom, seeking happiness, you know, I go on, I guess it started with a guy that saw me on the street and his name was Steve spirit lifter. And he said, Oh, I read, do you play an instrument? And I'm like, no. And he said, um, well, I read auras and yours is telling me you're a famous musician. So either he's just trying to give people confidence to, yeah. to go for it or, you know, so I was like, Hey, maybe, you know, so I think really what we tell people really does make a difference. So being supportive, being there for people is very important because we're all on, the, on a journey in our life and sometimes we end up struggling. So there I was and okay. So I started to, you know, straighten out my life and, and then I, you know, I met my wife and then I, I met my father who I never knew, which is another great story. And he's just an incredible person. So I had a lot of good things happening. So I'm, I'm really feeling good in my later years with, um, you know, the confidence I gained from what I've been through, uh, all the support that I found. Um, so it's like, okay, where's this going to go? What, a, how is this going to get channeled out? And so, yeah, just, I'm focusing on a lot of alternative things like healing and sound healing and meditation yeah. and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and there's a lot of interesting things with the paganism, pagan side of the band too, you know, like they, um, like I've always, I, I find myself like, Oh, I'm learning about the moon right now. So right now the moon is waning. Did so, you see the other uh, full moon the other night? Yeah. The pink one. Yeah. When everybody was going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like, uh, but now I'm like, okay, so now it's time to, I know now we're in a waning phase. So we got to start, you know, cleaning up and getting rid of things that we don't need anymore. And yes. then after the new moon and it starts waxing again, okay, so then we can start to set our intentions and we can start to, you know, do these things. So I like, I like nature, you know, and just tradition. And there's a, so many interesting things that I think Rissy really brings out uh, in her songs. And, and that is the, you know, indigenous cultures from the past that have been completely wiped out, you know, like Celtic stuff. Like that's a little hint about what's what's coming in on the next yes. album, um, <clears throat> you know, pre-Christian religions, you know, um, yeah. uh, and what's funny is my throat singing, um, you know, some Buddhists do it for meditational purposes, but also uh, there's a there's a province called Tuva in Russia near Mongolia, and the Mongolians throat sing. The Tuvans are really good and they've kept their heritage heritages throughout their whole life, like horseback riding, uh, um, you know, like herding and they're, um, I guess you could almost say animistic or shamanic tendencies. Cause they, they would, you know, listen to the sound of the rivers and, and, and the sky and wind and just recreating their experience, you know, through their singing and, they're just really darn good at it. And they were never colonized by any um, great empire. So they, they've been allowed to continue their traditions, you know? So, and I feel sad sometimes when we have like, um, you know, native people in that were wiped out or, or traumatized. So, you know, I think it's really important. Like, yes, it's great for technology and advancement yeah. and everything that we've done but sometimes there's a lot of old ways that need to come back and i think that's part of part of what we do in our band is just tell stories and you know well i think a lot of old ways wisdom. yeah i think a lot of old ways are starting to come back um just 
I'm not sure. And, and honestly, I'm not even sure why. Maybe it's just people are starting to have a fascination. We're starting to learn about them again. But uh, he's, I've seen a lot of people like uh, going completely organic is one of those things. Um, you know, cutting back on electricity. A lot of them are for, for environmental reasons. Um, but then a lot of them are also for like spiritual and mental and even physical health reasons as well. One of the things that I do just for fun is I physically chop wood. Mm. I, I uh, went out, I, I bought, bought an axe and when mm. I'm frustrated or just want to do something that will mm. tire me out, I just got some extra energy. I'll go in the backyard and I'll put in my earbuds and I'll put on like Viking war music. Mm-hmm. And I would just sit out there <laughs> and I'll just chop wood to the beat. Like, mm-hmm. and it's, it's such a just relaxing thing for me to do. And I, I know a lot of people where they do things like uh, maybe like whittling or some kind of like handcraft kind of thing that, mm-hmm. that, that happens to be a more, um, I, I guess, like a lost tradition. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like they're coming back. And then we, of course, we also have hipsters, which mm-hmm. take on a lot of the, the, the fashion of um mm-hmm. of older styles and older cultures as well yes vancouver has one or two of those yep. well i mean yeah important to stay considerate yeah, yeah. i hope you you burn yeah. you bur- burning the wood that you're chopping too right yes yes yeah <laughs> it's for firewood specifically is, yeah i think it has yeah to- i act yeah i actually um it, it's nice too because so i live in a suburb or a suburb area and Right now, a lot of the people in my area are chopping down their trees in their yards or like trimming them down. And so I just go and knock on the door and say, hey, do you mind if I have that? And they go, yeah, take it because they're just going to throw it out. They want nothing to do with it they're, or they're going to pay somebody to take it away. And I just I get it for free. You know, I got probably two hundred dollars. Yeah, I probably have like two hundred dollars worth of wood in my backyard right now for free. Like, <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> yes. a lot of good fires. It really does. Yeah. It's a lot of romantic nights under the, under the moon. Excellent. That, I is. think that's the interesting part though, is like making sure that, or, or acknowledging the fact that maybe some of those um, things are, should be a part of it. So maybe, you know, eating organic or even not chopping down all the trees is not just some, like something that, that, that yeah. APC tree huggers do, but actually something that we need to survive uh, in the yeah. long run. And, and I think that that is the realization that we all, I think, subconsciously have right now is uh, seeing that, oh, the way we've all been living for the last hundred years might mm-hmm. not be sustainable. And it's not even good for um, like us right now already. I mean, you know, we live in one of the most expensive cities in the world. Yeah. It's not that we could afford a house people a generation ago could do yeah. so you yeah. know being able to think a little bit more about hey maybe some of those old ways were actually useful in making sure that we bring them into the future right so yeah some things probably not that great but maybe there are ideas and 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 thoughts that that we forgot or are not aware of anymore or should be more aware of that mm-hmm. that we can bring into the future to make yeah make it still a good place to live. Absolutely. Like we, we don't need to be um, using leeches to try to like cure yeah. sickness and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. That, that can, that can stay in the past. Let's keep yes, it is. Vaccines around. Yes. That's a good thing. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Mo- modern medicine is a exactly. wonderful thing. Um, personally, I do enjoy uh, being able to control the temperature in the mm. house. If I don't have it, I'm not going to cry about it, but it is a nice luxury to have. <laughs> exactly. um, how, however, we should be doing things like, you know, just going on hikes watching the sunset sitting Mm -hmm. around a fire and telling stories these are these are things that just detach they they're so interesting because they simultaneously detach you from the world but bring you closer to it in a sense Mm -hmm. they detach you from all the nonsense of your outside life and just allow you to just be there with who is with you or what is with you and that is such a pure beautiful feeling that Mm -hmm. i feel like majority people lack and that's probably a very big reason why we have a lot of the issues we do today with things like uh, mental illness or like like depression stuff like that it's like people aren't getting enough time to themselves and quality time with one-on-one or just nature in general that they should be Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah raven 
Oh. It's your time. It's your time to shine. Oh. Tell us who you are. Me? Oh goodness me. Um, where do I start? I don't know. <laughs> what do you want to know? Ask me a question. <laughs> All right. Well, let let's start before you were even here. Tell me where you got your name from, Raven. Okay, so that's actually kind of interesting because my yeah my nickname has been Rissy for a really long time. Um, ever since yeah, I think since my sister, who's five years younger than me, when she was young, she couldn't say Larissa, so she would say Rissa, and it just turned into Rissa or oh. Rissy for years and years, and so that's kind of been like my nickname I've had ever since I was super young. Um, and then when all this crazy pandemicness started, I was like, well, I need to do something with music and I can't leave my house. Huh? So I started, um, doing DJ nights on Twitch and I started streaming on Twitch nice. and, uh, I was trying to find some sort of a name that, uh, was, I mean, from a marketing point of view, cause I also have a degree in graphic design. I was like, what's something cool? yeah. catchy and all this sort of stuff. And so, yes. you know, with alliteration for Raven Rissy, that kind of, um, it's kind of been there for m longer than that, but it really was kind of like, oh, well that could be my tag handle and could like, you know, make a little logo and like do things and people might listen to me stream music. And now it's kind of turned into a thing and now it's kind of become you know, like I was saying earlier, like a band aspect or a band persona, so to speak, of, of you know, of myself that it's like, okay, Raven Rissy mode engaged. All right, let's do this, you know. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, so that, it all started just for, I needed to try and find some way to not go crazy inside the house. And I was like, oh yeah, I used to do a thing that involved DJing back in the real world. Huh, I should do a thing again. How does this work now? <laughs> Oh, Twitch is annoying. How do I figure this website out? Hmm. <laughs> it's not user friendly. And so now, yeah, but now it's grown to be a bit of a thing, which is wonderful. And uh, it's actually been really helpful for the band stuff as well, because we've been able, we do like these streaming nights where once a month yeah. where, um, you know, Jesse will record some videos of him throat singing and explaining, and I'll show that alive on this, on the feed. And we show a great instrument. yeah, we show, we had a weird instrument show and tell on the last one. And, uh, yeah. And then I put together a DJ set that, uh, you know, is more, uh, of songs and different styles of music that have influence on like this project. Um, and as well, too, for when it comes down to, you know, like for airing, because we can only, you know, do videos right now or any, you know, yeah. online media. So it's been really useful to, you know, to air, you know, some of our newest videos. Like we had one for the Anubis lyric video. And then on May 10th, we're doing one for the Solar Tide lyric video, you know, and things like that. So that's been a really useful tool. But yeah, so that's kind of where that name just kind of was a thing it kind of was like made a bit out of necessity almost and then it was like actually this is cool i like this i'm keeping it here we are <laughs> yeah no I, I dig it i dig it a lot um in in, in my head i had a um uh an, an adhd moment for a second because I, I read Ra or, uh, raven rissy and then i started going oh if you change that e to an i it'd be it'd be like a rave she's raven like she's well, DJing and stuff we like that. Dance music, so there you go. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Doing that, and, and then mm -hmm. I thought, and then I thought raisin for some reason, <laughs> and then I was like, "Well, wait a minute." This question started where I was asking about her childhood. I was like, "Oh, it was like raisin raven." Like, <laughs> my my went south for for a minute there. Um, this <laughs> are these videos only on Twitch or are they also on YouTube as well? And yeah, I just well, didn't on... stumble upon them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're okay. on YouTube. Um, I believe they're on our YouTube channel Wait, and the music. Video. Okay, great. I believe I found one of the ones where um, Jesse was explaining and doing some of his throat singing on YouTube because I was listening to your music, and then I, I was driving, and so it just went automatically the next video, and I, I heard some people talking, and then I just heard nothing but the throat singing going on, and I was all like. What? I don't know if this is a song or like an intro to a video, but I I'm digging it. I'm having fun. And then he just goes, okay, thanks for watching. And then the <laughs> next act. <laughs> yeah, I'm all like, I feel bamboozled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, the, all the like music videos and stuff are, are on our YouTube channel, but the, the, yeah. Yeah, the Twitch, um, 
the Twitch stuff is only on Twitch. It's not streamed on like YouTube and Facebook and all other. Yeah. Stuff. I just do it directly just on Twitch because it's a, it's actually streaming stuff is not super easy. Like it just, it takes a lot of computing power and it takes. Oh yeah, I know. Behind the scenes stuff that to do, have it streamed on like multiple platforms at the same time is actually quite difficult. <laughs> also Facebook. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, you know, and some of those like Facebook and places have, you know, they have, um, rules and regulations that they will cut you off after a minute or two. So I yeah. just don't bother. I'm not crazy. sponsored by them in any way, <laughs> although it would be extremely nice if I was, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but, um, I, I use, uh, we, we use stream yards for all of our stuff and we, uh, we pay for that. And I can't remember how much it is. It's not like an ungodly amount of money, but, um, yeah. it's not, it's not extremely cheap either, but it does let us, I think we can stream to like 10 places at once. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to do Twitch, YouTube, um, personal mm. Facebook pages, business Facebook pages. So that helps out a lot because we looked for a while to try yeah. to figure out how to do that. And it is definitely not an easy task. No, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a, a mind twist. You're like, what? Why are you asking me yeah. to do all these things, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what? Twitch, you're yeah. so friendly. I'm confused. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just so been a I'm fun very... thing this past year. <laughs> Go ahead. Good. Well, like, like I said, everything that you guys have put out so far has been very solid, and I'm very impressed with it. Um, I am curious now, though, mm -hmm. what are some of these strange instruments? Oh. Okay. This is exciting. So, it's super, I'm super excited. Yeah. So, there's this lovely, weird instrument. Yeah. That, I thought of like a Ouija board type thing when I looked at that for the first, at first. Oh, there are strings on it. I can't yeah. see them. I, it's not okay. really in tune, but. Ooh. So, this, so this instrument, this is a, it's a, called a rota. It's a um, Welsh, like Anglo-Saxon plucked lyre, basically. And I actually won it at a Bardic event. A friend of mine gave it to me. So I was like, hey, it's going on the album. So that was really kind of fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's basically a lyre, um, which is a, a similar to like a harp or that type of one. But it originally comes from like the Welsh part of England and Europe and that part. Of the is that on Void? Yes, this one is on void. I have to record this in like a month and a bit. I have to learn my part. Um, yeah. But, but, <laughs> that's yeah. a song that's going to be on the next project, the next album. And we've been making it. So I've been playing my part. And, and I heard this instrument and I didn't know what it was or where it came from or anything. And it, and then when you just played it now, I'm like, that sounds like it's the one on void. <laughs> <laughs> It is so cool. It sounds so cool in the track, but you'll just have it's to like wait. Creepy, dark. I'm very excited to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I can already tell you right now, I'm going to be listening to uh, your guys' music next time I'm chopping wood. Yay. <laughs> like, That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the next <laughs> one, this here is a sistrum. And this is a rattle. Um, it is an ancient Egyptian instrument, actually, um, and it was mostly used by women priests or priestesses. Oh, Dave, don't hit the, <laughs> hit the microphone, Dave. Sorry, um, but basically, it was used by um, female priests um, during for like the cult of Isis or Hathor, more for female-oriented deities. And it was used, as far as we understand, to their writings, like in their rituals, whenever they were doing whatever they were doing. So. It's a more of a rattling noise, and we have recorded this, so you'll hear this noise on the EP that's already out on Kemet. Yeah. So yeah, it's it can, it sounds a little shrill with the like just like plain on its own, but once you give it a little bit of oomph, it actually mellows out quite a bit. It wasn't as shrill recorded it, as I thought it would be. Um, it almost yeah. makes me think of um wet coins dropping, <laughs> like like a pile of wet change. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Some Pirates of the Caribbean stuff is what right. popped into my head. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it was a really interesting instrument to record. Our 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 recording guy was just like, "All right, let's see." All the, I I warned him. I'm like, "So we're gonna have some really weird things." He's like, "All right, let's bring it." And I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. I didn't warn you. 
<laughs> that, but that's what you need to make great music. You need to be somebody. You you need somebody who is willing to at least try these weird things. Yeah. Oh, and exactly. at least see what works. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that one is definitely on the Kemet EP as well as this guy. This is dried fruit from Peru. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Can you do it really slow? I love that. Oh, that's so wonderful. <laughs> right? I really love this noise a lot. It recorded so nicely, and it's also in the, in the EP as well. It's one of my favorite, like, rattles, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that I got like goosebumps when I heard that. I've never been into like ASMR or anything, but if I was, that would just be the sound, just, just that lightly <laughs> in my ear. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, those are some of the really weird instruments that we have recorded and will continue to record with because they're awesome. Oh, and it's even, fantastic. You know, and even like Dave saying, you know, like with the egg shakers, like just adding those rattles, just we're like, whoa, our song is totally amazingly different now. This is crazy. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, we have some, we have a collaborator on one of our songs um, in the next album, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can spill it, Jesse. Go ahead. Okay, okay so uh, there's a band called Calib Calibri. 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 Yeah. Calibri. Yeah. So there's a didgeridoo player, and he reached out to oh. you guys. Yeah. Oh my god, that's awesome! That's so yeah. cool. So oh. he laid down some tracks, some some did you do's in there, and yeah, it sounds awesome. Oh yeah, it's just yeah. So Calibri is like a pagan folk band from Spain, and they've been around actually for quite for quite a while. They're one of the for that folk style music. They've they've been around for quite a long time. I'd argue maybe one of the pioneers of bringing that a little more mainstream in europe, in europe anyways and uh yeah he reached out to me on facebook and you know we were chit-chatting and whatnot and he was like yeah i'd love to do some more dancey stuff and so i sent him you know some of our demos of one of our new songs he's like oh i got this idea and then eventually i got back this like amazing <laughs> file and i was like oh my goodness this is going on this, album. this is amazing so, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah our song salt and tears has him has uh, victor playing didgeridoo on it which I'm yeah he, it, it was for. sounded so good that we we have to rewrite my part now yeah so it's gonna be like <laughs> oh can, yeah it's it. gonna be like dueling throat singing versus didgeridoo yeah. that's that was the idea now. i mean yeah As that's well. really cool yeah, we're super, super. I like that. In my in my mind, you're having like a musical conversation <laughs> with with these instruments. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, All right. So cool. you got to tell me that now. We we've talked so much about it. I gotta know when do you have a planned date or like a, a time period for this uh, this next project to be coming out. Um, so we're recording our vocals in June. Um, okay. So hopefully a couple days of recording, we can get those vocals done and some of those like rattles and the rota and all that stuff um, done yeah. then over the two to three days. And then we were actually just talking about that. We're hope we, I think we want to try and release the first single, maybe like, like December, January. We're hoping, yeah. you know, depending on how things go and, you know, how, um, you know, how production, how busy, you know, Scott is and all this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, hopefully the first single, probably like December, January, and then maybe, you know, by, I don't know, March, April-ish next year for, you know, the, the album, something around those lines. We're still kind of working out. We don't really have an exact date yet it always right now it's so it's always so hard to give an exact date with everything being so up yeah and absolutely and everything but mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. really does depend on you know like we don't want to rush like it has to be done by this date you know but uh uh because we really do want to have you know to make sure that what um you know what we get back with the you know from the production side really does mesh well and blend well Especially yeah. with all of these like odd instruments it does take quite a bit of time to find your levels and balances with them so that things are not overpowering yes. or the electronic side is well balanced with those traditional type instruments. So we, 
Oh, absolutely so like to time it so that we can tour with it yeah that so that that was cool. another part why it might take longer than we would want it to but um uh yeah two things one would be um seeing how label negotiations go and the other one would be uh tour like regarding to that being able to go on tour with it yeah yeah be, the goal is to make sure um, that, that you know it, yeah ideally we'd go on tour and play a couple of places in North America. Hopefully. That'd be nice. Well, if, if you're here, definitely let me know because I would absolutely yeah, come to see. 100%. I think that, that that would be so amazing to come to like a festival or something. I could do like a, a live interview with you guys there or something like yeah. that as well. Yeah, that, that would be an absolute blast. Um, do you do you know, have an approximation of how many tracks is going to be on this album? There's seven. Seven, nice. Exactly. All right. Exactly yes. seven. Yes, there's seven. Exactly seven. Seven of them. That's a good number. Yeah. I like seven. That's a good number. Yeah. Um, so do you do you have a plan for how you'll be releasing it? Are you gonna release like two singles and then everything else, or a couple more? Like, do do you have you thought about that yet? Um. Yeah. I mean, that I think is still a bit of a work in progress because, again, yeah. with things. Uh, from like musical marketing point of view being so abnormal right now it's always hard yes to, do you release a couple do you just release the whole thing like so i know we definitely want to release celtic cry as the first single um yeah for sure and i i personally would love to make a music video for it i have this re this idea that's stuck in my mind but it does require a group of people so realistically when can we actually like safely record actually shoot that i don't know yeah maybe next summer but that's always so dependent on how things go um yeah. but i you know like i think maybe one or two singles and then the album i think seems like a logical thing you know i would like to do yeah. again of course pandemic depending on how much we can actually group wise stay together and you know do other music videos or is it just lyric videos in the meantime you know that sort of thing yeah um, i would like to release a couple of those visual elements to go along with it so you know it's still a work in progress but i know for sure we're definitely you know like celtic cry is definitely going to be the first single when it gets there absolutely um it, here's a just a piece of advice uh from me and my, my experience with uh, releasing um albums and singles and everything so the uh, the band that I was in, um, I was in a band called Dying Desolation for three years. Um, I was the lead singer of the band before my departure from them. And the first album that we released, we did, I want to say, three singles. Mm -hmm. And then we released the rest of the album. Um, we did advertisement. We did some music videos for those singles. They got, uh, they got a healthy amount of love for them. Um, for what it was and what we put into them and everything advertisement wise. Yeah. Uh, however, the rest of the songs we released after that got very little to nothing as far as exposure. Mm -hmm. We completely changed what we decided to do with our EP that we did. Mm -hmm. And we ended up, um, or they ended up after I left, or in all honesty, I was fired from the band. Uh, just creative differences and inner drama. It, but been there, done that, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So, but they ended up uh, taking the first album off. They're going to re-record it just because of the quality of it. And we talked about this prior to me being fired from the band. And I agreed as well that, yes, it did need to be re-recorded in the future anyway. Uh, but with our EP, what we decided to do uh, when I was still part of it with our releasing process is we released all six songs as a single. Mm -hmm. and we put about three weeks in between, like two or three weeks, I can't remember off the top of my head, but we put two or three weeks in between each release. Mm -hmm. And then for each single, um, we talked to a guy who did very good arts and very affordable, and we worked a deal with him that he did a simple art piece, um, like a cover art for each single. Mm -hmm. And then we did a couple music videos and a couple lyric videos, and then we took those times, like those couple weeks in between to just market that one song. And because of that, instead of having a few hundred uh, views on each song or even like a couple low tens, 
we had thousands of views on every song that we did and the music videos had tens of thousands mm -hmm. so th that could be something to take into account that's something that, that a lot of artists are starting to do now as well just because you know back in the day if you wanted to hear a song you had to buy the cd you had to buy the record you had to buy the tape uh, mm -hmm. just for that one song now if you want to hear a song it's right there for you yeah, yeah. it's that one song it's whatever you want it to be yeah. so when you kind of make them all singles they all get that spotlight and people you you kind of almost force people to listen how they used to have to to hear every single one totally hmm. cool. yeah so, so, you can so just that. just something to think about yeah, absolutely Absolutely, I appreciate just, it. Yeah. No, this is really interesting. Yeah. So you're saying like once yeah. all songs are out, the album is basically out, right? Yeah. Like that yeah. works. Like you go, you go after the like you market and promote each one individually, and then once the last one is out, you're like, by the way, this is the album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that that no, that's exactly what we did. Like think they about like um. So what happens like when Netflix releases a new show and it goes trending? You binge watch the hell out of it. And then you wait for the next season. But then when you had something like The Walking Dead or um, Game of Thrones, you know, people, they would just wait for that next episode. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Just, they just wait. Yeah. They just wait. And they keep watching. It's very interesting yeah. because I, I sort of feel like that happened a little bit with our EP. You know, yeah. Other World was like a big hit. And then yeah. we released the EP. And there's, you know, maybe a couple songs that don't really get as noticed as much because they weren't presented, yeah. they weren't marketed, they weren't, you know, and it's not, yeah. I'm not saying we did anything wrong, but it's just different ways of doing things that, um, you know, might be yeah, the way it is nowadays yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it, it's, well, it's so difficult to get your music out there because one, anybody can get their music out there. So it's very easy. On the other hand, it's very easy and anyone can get their music out there. So. <laughs> So you got mm. you have to find like these new strategies to, and another thing too, it keeps your stuff relevant for longer, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Mm. You know, it, it it gives you a lot more like leeway instead of releasing two songs and then the other five, and then people listen to them all at once really quick. And you're all like, oh, well now I have another year from that one from when those five songs dropped like another year or two to start getting new music out. Now it gives you a span of like two and a half, three months, depending on how many songs you have and how many singles you decide to do of releasing that music. And we, we also talked about, um, uh, cause I, I'm not a part of the second album, but we, I was during the process of writing it and that was going to be about 16 songs. We were going to do like half of those as singles yeah, and then the rest release all at once yeah, totally. just because it was a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So there's like different strategies to it, but yeah. from what we found, doing the more singles tended to benefit us better because then we could also do uh, more different merch for yeah. specific songs as well. Yeah, and it just kind of like spread everything out for us as well financially too, which really helped. Yep. Pretty yeah. Much. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But uh, no, I'm very excited. So you said seven tracks then. Do you know how long it is? Oh, I haven't timed it. Hmm. Most of our songs are at least five minutes or so. Give or yeah. Time. Yeah, you have good length songs. And even the shorter ones, I noticed I would get so lost in the sound of them. It would be over, and I'd be like, that was a goddamn eternity. And I'd look at it and be like, it was three minutes and 58 seconds. I'm like, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It's working. It's working. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. You get lost. I think less than 40, more than 30, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's it's. Nice. I find too, it's hard to to say right now because they're still really in the production stage. That mm -hmm. you know yeah. that once we get you know vocals and the rest of the you know weird instruments recorded, then once I gets to production, then that you know things might like extend or things might shorten up. So that really is dependent. Yeah. Usually, they're usually roughly like around five minutes or so. There's nothing less than I think four roughly if i remember right maybe there is but nice. yeah usually around then is what it tends to end up in so we'll see i love it i yeah. love it yeah. <laughs> is there a is there a dream festival that any or all, all three of you what, what is uh, your like your dream show or dream festival 
that you want to play one day? Oh, well, I think Rissi knows the name of that. There's a few, basically, there's some European things going on. Yeah. 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 So, like Dave was talking about some of the German, like, alternative goth festivals. There's one in Leipzig called the Wave Gothic Treffen or the VGT or the WGT. And uh, it's basically a bunch of goths get together, listen to amazing music for a week straight. Anywhere from like electronic to metal to folk to like, and it's the whole city. It's wonderful. Mm. And that sounds phenomenal. It's yeah, where is this? They have Chester. like a medieval village, and like you can like go to church, and you can go to museums, and you can go to the opera, and have like Victorian high tea in the park. Like it's amazing. It's it. I, where is this? It's in Leipzig in Germany. West East in Germany. Yeah, it's in Germany. So if you ever, if people ever want to go overseas for a festival like that. I highly recommend going to that one because for the price of how much the festival is, it's a week long and it's worth the money for how long you're there for, especially if we're going to come from yeah. North America to travel. Whereas the other ones in Germany are usually just a weekend. So they're fun, but they're only a weekend, whereas this one's a week. So it's more, yeah. you get more, more time for your money, basically. But more I'm bang for your buck. I got gotcha. you. Like if you're an alternative band and you play at the VET, that's kind of like you've made it. That that's that's the <laughs> thing. So, dream goal. That would be great. And Terminus. Yeah, I mean Terminus Festival and in Calgary, in Calgary yeah. at Dickens Pub. Um, our old project played there. I'd love to be able to bring this new project and blow everybody's minds. It would be wonderful. Um, yeah, I think you could. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Fairy Worlds down yeah. in Port Portland? Oregon. Oregon. Down in Oregon. Close to Portland. Close to Portland, yeah. Uh, I would love to play Fairy Worlds. That would be... I've never been able to get down there in the before times, but um, I've always wanted to go, and I know some of the more folk bands that I really like have played there, so that would be really cool to do something like that. Um, yeah, like those are the three big ones off the top of my head that would be awesome one day. <laughs> Right love now, it. we absolutely it. love it. Anything, yeah. Okay, I'll play it. Yeah. <laughs> ten people, I'm cool with that. Like, let's let's do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. I absolutely love it. Well, I got one last question, and this has been the question that I've decided to uh, just start asking all, all the musicians because I think it's an interesting one. Interesting one to uh, ask them. It's kind of makes them self reflect a little bit. So you are given as much money as you need to put on the best the show of your dreams. Mm. Where are you playing at? And who are the who are two bands that are playing with you? They can either be direct support for you or they are gonna play or you are gonna be direct support for them. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you need a location and two bands. Mm -hmm. can I do the location? Hmm. You can do Okay, so um, you can all give me an answer as well. It can yeah, all be different. I'm gonna go for yeah. a location. I've been yeah. wanting ever since all of this started to actually play a show in the forest, like not just on a clearing, but have the band be like, like kind of in the music video, but with a little bit more like of a setup. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have that as the the stage, like we're. The, the, yeah nature is the yep. stage mm. and you know it, it, it will be filmed in a way that that kind of represents all that so i don't know i i have this idea and i've been playing with it for a long time i still would love to do that <laughs> um so in the forest who to play with that is a good question oh, i know so, jesse has probably thoughts and <laughs> yeah <too>. so <laughs> I, yeah in the forest um and then i'd love to stream it so that those people who couldn't be there or who don't live you know here for example if that's where oh definitely yeah you have unlimited money for this exactly. so no, whatever you want to do with it you got it yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know outdoors i agree hmm. i it's hard for me to pick just two bands but i would say if there was two bands that would be both the like um folk pagan aspect and the electronic side I would probably say Heilung, which are like the folk, um, uh, folk pagan side of it. And then for the electronic side, oh, 
So many good ones. The first one that pops into my head is a smaller band from, uh, I think it's Ottawa or Toronto, but the Ontario area there. Uh, his name is Witch Doctor, and he's very like dark, creepy, heavy, like tribal industrial. <laughs> so yeah. uh, those two and us would be amazing. Yep, that'd be great. Hell and yeah. Let's merge together. That, that's my goal. <laughs> Hell yeah, I love it, I love it. I know what about you, Jesse? You got some endpoint? You got some input? Um, well, that would be really good. Um, you know, I think it would be fun to be with Scott Fox as well. Uh, yes. That would be a great show. Ivarden Sphere is his project and this morn's Amana. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, right right now I got one there's some Tuvan artists that are really knocked my socks off. Um, there's a guy named uh Alexei Kovalig. And so he's from Tuva and he just released an album with a couple guys there, uh, but it's all in Russian. So like, I don't even know what the name of the album is or, or <laughs> anything like that. And um, he's got a very good style of throat singing that I, that I've like decided is my favorite because he's very good at what he does. And it's just good goals, you know, life goals. Yeah. Um, and there's another artist who lives in Oregon um, named uh, Soraya Enrique Igalde, and he's a very talented uh, throat singer as well. And hopefully when you know travel is allowed and shows are allowed, uh, he can come up here or, or uh, and we can ha play with him. That would be really cool. Yeah, it would be super cool. It will mm -hmm. be a cool lineup. I'd be excited about this show. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love yeah. it. And this is exactly why I asked these questions, because in all honesty, I don't know any of these people, but now I get to watch back in the video and look them mm -hmm. up, and now I have all this new music to listen to. So I'm very excited mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. that. There's so much music out there that is not known to anybody. It just yeah. happens to be that you found it and you're lucky <laughs> that yeah. it's there. Yeah, that, that that's really what it takes. Sometimes you just gotta that that right person to find. You. People still get discovered just in a very different way than they used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, any last words that any or all of you might have? Any uh, plugins that you want to do? Anything else for the audience? Wait. Mm -hmm. I'm right, I'm oh, in suspense. Can you, Dave is playing keyboard right now. Can you hear anything? I can hear it. Yeah, we can oh, hear okay, it. Excellent. This is new to me too. I know that. Oh, oh. 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 wrong note. <laughs> <laughs> That's the intro. So that was part of Celtic that Cry. Was, I messed up <laughs> yeah. Celtic Cry. I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, hey, this is why just, we need to practice. You see. Either way, that that was that was beautiful. I loved that. that. That was actually really warm in my earbuds. That was. Thank you so much. That's the first time I've had one of our guests or one of my guests uh, play on here. So thank well, you. I wasn't even sure if it was gonna work, so I should have probably practiced yeah. it one more times. But there you go. Um, no, this is how it fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. once again, my name is Gavin Kerr. I am here with Hem Netch Netcher. Netcher. Yes. 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 Got it. <laughs> With him, Netcher. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for having Jesse, us. Jesse, Raven, David. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. And like I said at the very beginning, you have such a balanced, humble, pure, genuine sound to you. Please keep doing what you're doing. I'm very, very excited to come see you in concert when you're here in the States. Mm -hmm. Or if I have to come out and visit you, I will. And I'm very excited to hear your new project. Keep me updated on when that is coming out. I cannot wait. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. You all have a wonderful night and take care. Bye.